He's been out of the game for five minutes. He should put him back in. It's crazy. I think he's upset. I don't even know. Maybe he's, uh, he's tired. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Idiot. Oh. What did you do? Here we are again, Jeff. We are here again. I'm Susie Espen. Who are you? Uh, I was sitting with bad posture. I'm Jeff Garland. Now I'm my pot. I don't know if you can tell in my voice. Started when I was talking yeah, bad posture. I could tell. Now I'm in good posture. And you're, you know why? Because you're you're speaking from your diaphragm. Did yeah. you ever take a voice uh, thing when you were acting? A voice God, class? God no. God yeah. no. They and do by that. The, way, the voice. My voice. I would not want. It's the one thing I can say is pretty unique to me. Is the way I talk. It's very unique. And voice. by the way, it can be irritating to some people. And I apologize if you're one of them. Not you, Susie, but if you're listening and you're like, oh, this guy makes me crazy. All I can do is apologize. And I am bipolar and I am ADD. So therefore, I'm going to be annoying at some point. Here's what I say if they don't like your voice. Yeah. Don't tune in. But don't listen. <laughs> yeah, that's always the joke. Okay, we are on season two, episode eight, Shaq. Shack. Shack. Which is self explanatory. Which is self explanatory. There's yeah. only one shack. Uh, we begin dining out. Now, here's what, what struck me and the, they're they're at a restaurant. From from the first ten seconds, it's so clear that it's Cheryl's friends. Well, by the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? My my marriage, you know, to Marla, we went out to dinner. I can count on one hand in a twenty five year marriage that it wasn't her friends. One hand. Really? Oh, God, yes. Interesting. My friends were meant to be lunch one-on-one -on -one with we're me. Kind, we're kind of the opposite. You, 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 you and Jimmy, you mean? Yeah, Jimmy and I, it's almost always my friends. Why is that the opposite? I just said it's almost always her friends. Right, but I'm saying it's almost always my friends. Well, yeah, but that's... Oh, you're saying the wife's friends. Yeah, the wife okay. rules this yeah, situation. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Jeff, let me ask you this. When yeah. you would go out with Marla's friends, yeah. uh, were they boring? Almost always. Uh huh. Okay. Because Cheryl's friends By the way, seem to I be almost being always at a boring. Party. I remember being at a party and Larry walked in, and he had such a sense of relief when he when saw me. When he saw me. you, of course, because I've been in that same situation. We, we we're carny folk. Let's admit it. We are carny folk. We can only really talk with other carny folk people. It comes easy. We understand each other, and so depends on what the kind. Of, yeah, like not not the guy who's operating the the roller coaster. By the way, I want to I want to about half the people we ate dinner with, I found terribly boring, but the other half were delightful. Because clearly, these people, Cheryl's friends, Larry's bored out of his mind having oh, dinner. Oh, but with by the way, friends. this is a whole other level of boredom. This is like. Um, you almost can feel Larry saying at the beginning of these dinner scenes, especially the group ones with all people we've never seen, that within the first 10 seconds of him in the scene, he wants to stand up and go, I'm leaving. Yes. You know, because he is but really. But he doesn't because he's married. He doesn't and because he it's knows a show. what's good for him. No. It, no, even in real life, the husband knows what's good for them. I guess. I have a note here. I watched this a couple of weeks ago, so I don't remember everything. I have a note here, bottom of the broccoli cauliflower. No idea what that means. Do you? Um, maybe someone, I don't remember. Someone was saying something about it. But the thing I remember of this, first off, it was a venison restaurant. Yes. They're, they're ordering normal food. It was a location in uh, the hills around Malibu that they serve only venison uh -huh. and vegetables, I'm sure. And also, it was my birthday. Oh. And so it was June. June 5th. And I'm not, you know, Jeff I've never. And I, for our audience, I want you to know that Jeff and I are both Geminis. Yeah, we are. And we get along with both sides. <laughs> it doesn't matter which side we're currently at. I we have understand. less sides than you. Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm an, I, I don't even know how to answer that. But what I wanted to say was it's my birthday, and we always would celebrate birthdays. And yeah. I said, no one even mentioned my birthday. There was not like a that venison was the one time, with a candle in <laughs> no, it? Not. That was the one time in the history of our show where my birthday has occurred on a day of work. But, and, and we and shot no one this, forgot this in 2001, and you remember, so it hurt. By the way. It hurt. It was disappointing. I was sad. I don't know how deep it hurt. I still remember after all these years, but nonetheless. So so they're, they're at dinner. Yeah. And it's a big round table, a lot of yeah. people. And Jeremy has something he wants to ask Larry. 
<laughs> uh, it's really no big deal. It's, um, you know, uh, I'm applying for a fellowship. You want to switch classes with me? Is that it? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that whole Clark Kent thing you got happening there. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. It works at the galleries, yeah. you know, so. Um, I'm applying for a fellowship at uh, LA County Museum of Art, and uh, right. yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. But uh, I need a letter of uh, recommendation, and um, I would absolutely be indebted to you forever if you could do it for me. Jeremy uh, S. Larry, uh, something about he's got some job at the new LA County of Art Museum. I think he's a docent. A docent. <laughs> A you know what that means? Yes, I yeah, do. Okay. They're the people that give the tours. The and he wants a letter of recommend- recommendation from Larry. And uh, Larry, Larry's like, you know, he doesn't know anything about art. He barely knows Jeremy. Uh, you, you could see that Larry's put out. But doesn't he mention it in the scene? Like, I, I don't know what I know about yeah, that. I, yeah. You know, he tries getting out. He mentions out. Jeremy does the uh, geometric circles and think. You know, once I asked Larry when I was buying a co-op, to give me a letter of recommendation because you have to give recommendations for the co-op board. And he was, they wanted from my employer. He was the only employer I could even think of, you know, right. I have employers. And he just said to me, you write it. Now, whatever you write, I'll just sign. And then right. it, was, it was fine. It was easy. Um, and they all, they all toast to Larry and to the Lakers. Cause they know that the, the, the Larry's a Knicks fan. We're establishing Larry's a Knicks fan and they're all Lakers fans. And he says, he's going to the game tomorrow night. Courtside seats, you have the courtside seats. Oh, I do, but I can't go. You can't go, but we haven't established that yeah, yet. You right. have the courtside, and he can't stand the Lakers. But they have Shaq, the best player in the entire world. They they can't leave. Uh, Bob, who's one of the guests, gets up to go to the bathroom, and Bob's wife tells them all that they want her to do a birth, it want all of them to do a birthday page. Now, Anna asked me, is that a real thing, a birthday page? Oh, God, yes. Really? I don't know. And I actually, if I know the person, I have trouble getting it in. If I don't know the person, I don't even make it. And basically, what it is, is it's a book where everybody gives a page. Maybe it's Um, a poem, maybe it's a recollection, or maybe it's a letter. Maybe it's a letter, or maybe it's a drawing. Yeah, you don't know. Or something. And you see Larry's face. I believe one of those, I just drew a pumpkin and didn't explain it. In one of those birthday books. I'm remembering that right now. A pumpkin. Just drew a pumpkin. And so they saw a pumpkin and they I'm sure they were confused, which is what I wanted. Because I don't know them. But you did it. And you see, Larry, first he's asked for a letter of recommendation from somebody he doesn't know. Then he's asked for a birthday page. And people do this to people who are funny. They think, oh, you'll you'll just make it funny. Like it's just so easy. You know what I mean? You'll just write something and it'll be funny. By the way, I had that once in a movie. I did a movie called Jacob's Ladder. Uh, and in, there was a party scene with all the postal people. He worked in the post office and Adrian Lyne said something to me because he'd see, you know, when I auditioned, I improvised a lot. And he said to me, Jeff, go out there and be witty. Just be, be witty, witty yeah. with no substance, yeah. no like in what direction be witty. So I'm in the middle of these scenes. And so what I would be doing in those scenes is forcing myself in and saying something that, that was... Work. Not really funny. And guess what? Cut out of the movie. Cut out. And, and, and frequently... I was one of... It's a very dour movie, and I was Jacob's funny friend, and so there was no... I'm gone. You're funny. I think I was supposed to be in that movie. I think... I forgot what happened You had a with popcorn that. stand, I remember. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, Okay, so Larry and Cheryl are getting up to leave, and Larry goes to put down money. I, I don't know. Well, how much is this? Six, six two. Well, I don't know. Eighty? What did you have? I, I mean, we just had some turkey. What did we have? Turkey and a glass of wine? I, I don't even know what to put down here. I mean, I'm... Ninety? How's that? Is that good? Is ninety good? Do you like sweets? I'm sure they'll have that. Like a three-layer. 110. Chocolate. I have to get that. You talked about 115. That. I, what'd you have? Chicken and turkey and a glass. Of, I got 115 dollars. Is that cool? And nobody's lazy. Should I put down money? And he keeps on putting it. another 20. See, and another way, 20. And it, another 20. Hold on. As he did it. It was a little exaggerated, but I've been there that you keep putting more yeah. and more and more. It was and realistic. no one's looking at you. Because they want him to keep going. Yes. So I he know. keeps going. He, he ends keeps up paying going. for the whole dinner. And then, then they're in the car on the way home. And he's like, I go out to dinner. I end up with homework assignments. And he carries on. He, <laughs> he's about- By the way, that line alone is so great. Homework assignments. Because that's what it feels like. 
That's exactly what it feels like. It does. Yeah. I don't like homework assignments. Oh, I can't stand them. Please One of the don't. reasons why we love doing this show so much right. is we don't have to, the homework assignment of memorizing lines. We just have to. By the way, I'm at a point now where Jeff Schaefer, our director, literally, and I've done this for a number of years with him now, I read the outline once when Larry first sends them to us. And this is before the season. After that, I don't read anything like the day's pages. I literally will enter a scene and say to Jeff Shaver, and he, he loves, he like, I don't know if he loves it, but he certainly appears to be very affable about it. He'll tell me what the scene's about and what I did before and what I do after. And that's all I use. That's it. Him telling me. And I think we've discussed this before. I always read it ahead of time. I know. I always look at it. I like to know. I like to know what my day is. I like to know what I'm wearing that day, especially. Way, oh, I have well, Leslie. What you're wearing is a big I have Leslie of... tell me the night before what am I wearing tomorrow. She tells me what I'm wearing. She sends me a picture. It, I just like to get By into the way, my the head. The outfit that you've worn a couple of times that I've commented on, it is sublime because anyone else in the world wearing that outfit, people would go. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Not Yet on you, me. You wear it, and it's the <laughs> calmest thing. And it that's was, why I was, it was subtle. It, it was, was by subtle. the way, it was insane yet subtle. And uh, yeah, it was. And when, and many, many months, or maybe even years from now, when we get to season twelve, yeah. we'll discuss it. Okay. Well, no, no. Maybe. Yes. You think I'm not going to discuss we will. that? Okay. We will. All right. Um. Okay. And they they. They go home and Cheryl's parents are there visiting and they're playing categories. And that whole scene is hilarious. The Arabia. And by the way, everything with, with the, the two of them are hilarious. One of my heroes. Paul Dooley. Had a, had a running role on the show. He really, all I see him, and this is a movie many of you have not seen, Breaking Away. Breaking Away. But terrific. the one line, Refund. Refund, yeah. Because his son tells him he gave, he owns a car dealership, and his son gave a refund. And all they can bring up out of himself is refund with a question mark, yeah. and an exclamation and point. And Barbara Barry is terrific as the well, that uh, mother there. Brilliant. Wonderful if you watch Breaking Away, you'll enjoy it. Young Dennis Quaid, yeah. Young, um, uh, what's his name from? I guess his most famous movie is Home Alone. Daniel Stern. Yeah. I mean, it's really quite beautiful. It's worth it's worth seeing. Oh, very much so. And and then Larry goes upstairs and Paul says, don't you say goodnight? I, Which I, becomes a running well, thing. Well, by the way, in that moment, Larry just says goodnight and goes on his way. He did, At this point, he's not even reacting to it. It's a father-in-law. I'll go and say it. Like that one he does, it doesn't even, re I'm sure he shook it off when it first happens. Then he's lying in bed. He's trying to read and you just hear them in the background, Occidental, and screaming and yelling. And and he turns to Cheryl's like, what do you about know about this page? And he starts, this is where he well, starts. Well, does he yell? Hold on. Doesn't he yell an answer? I, I believe so, he yes. He yells an answer. Oh, no, Larry yells accidental. The yeah. And then the mother Julie, says yeah. it, but doesn't acknowledge that Larry just yelled it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and th this is where he's in bed with Cheryl, and he starts to... Uh, go on and on about these homework assignments. A dear L.A. County Museum, Jeremy, who is somewhat of an acquaintance, uh, you know, just constant on and on about if the I'm homework assignments. If I'm not mistaken, isn't she facing away from him when he does I think this? so. I yeah, think so. Yeah, which is unique to the show. And she's, at this point, she's really, had it. she's had it. Uh, and, you know, by the way, those are the kind of things that he's naming that you really want to do for some. Like, I couldn't see, like, I would never ask Larry to write a page. You know, we have a thing, and I did this with my sons. Larry said, I, you know, I knew how he felt. I go, Larry, you're not invited to either one of my son's bar mitzvahs. Thank you. Yeah, well, same yeah, thing with me. Yeah, we, did, we had the same thing, yeah, if you recall. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. And he is so grateful. And if you're a real friend with somebody and you know them, you can't have bullshit expectations. However, so, Jeff. What? Yes. However, yeah. uh, what my 65th birthday yeah. and your 60th birthday, yeah. Larry did do videos for both of us. Oh, by the way. By the way, that but that's Larry. He enjoys that, though. I also think that he loves us, so he enjoys yeah. that. And by we're the way, we're not acquaintances. Did you ever see mine? Hilarious! Oh he, my he god, he did a good night moon. Yeah, good night moon with good night Jeff. It with, was with so good night funny. nurse, and he's wearing good night nurse, yeah. and he's wearing a costume. Yeah, 
a cape, a hat. It was so... It was fantastic. My jaw was on the ground when fantastic. I saw him do that. Yes. No, I'm not saying he wouldn't do it for us. And we're but nice acquaintances. To yeah, he gets... By the way, this dude gets asked a lot of... A he lot must, because I get asked no, a lot. I'm sure he gets asked way we, more. By the way, how many times have we done letter of recommendation on our show? Oh, yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah, a lot. you know, so... Okay, so next scene... There, you're in the locker room at the golf club, mm -hmm. and you're there, and you can't go to the Laker game that right. you're supposed to go to with Larry. And you tell, say, take Richard Lewis. It's fine. And then Albert Mail, Shaq's agent, walks by. Yeah. Terrific Mark actor. DiCar Mark DiCarlo. Yeah. I've never seen, I, I've known Mark DiCarlo for 100 years from Chicago. I have never seen him do better work. This is not to say his other work's not good. He was so good. relaxed. But he, so... but he was playing something that was so, you know, right up his alley. The he agent. Could hit it out of the, but he could hit that out of the park yeah. with his joy. Yeah. And like, come on, we'll do this. It was just so, yeah. yeah. And he tells Larry that Shaq loves Seinfeld. And um, and and he, he says to you to look at this thing on his back. He's got some kind of. Hold on, can you hear this? Yeah, I can. It's water pouring. He's got some kind of a, yeah, whatever, some skin thing on his back. And he asks you to look at it on his back. And and is it you that say, ask Doc Wiggins? Or is it, or is it uh, uh, Al, the agent, who says, ask Doc no, Wiggins? No, I think it's me, but I'm I'm not sure. Okay. So oh, no, it's me. I'm encouraging him. Oh, yeah. You say, ask there. Doc Wiggins. Doc yeah. Wiggins is sitting over there. He's the Lakers doctor. Hey, uh, Dr. Wiggins? Hey. H how you doing? Good. Um, I'm sorry to bother you with this. I got a little thing on my back, and, and I was hoping you could save me a visit to a dermatologist. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm running a little late. Well, it's only take a second, take a quick look at it. I'm, I'm sure it's nothing, and you know, you could just tell me if it's. You gonna make an appointment and just come on down to the office? I'll be happy to look at it there. I mean, it would just take a second, really. I mean, just say something or nothing, and you know, it's Jesus. like looking at your watch, really. What do you do for a living? I'm a writer. Next time you're in a big hurry, why don't you write me a bunch of shit for free? And, Larry, and by the way, is he an eye doctor? Something that has nothing to do with rashes. Well, if he's a Lakers doctor, he's probably an orthopedist. Yeah, that's what he is. Yeah. yeah. So he go. Larry goes to ask Doc Wiggins, and Wiggins is like having none of it. You know. Next, to, you know. By the way, I could see that's like you know someone saying, "Do that voice you do, or whatever," to us. Yeah, or but say also, something funny. Oh, but, yeah, say something funny, but also. I get out of it with a smile. I do it. I don't go, why the fuck would you ask me no, that? No, Wiggins was, was yeah, He was angry. really yeah. angry And he, sa he says to Larry, next time you're in a hurry, why don't you write me a bunch of shit for free? He basically said, you know, so yeah. that's basically it. And you see he's a hard ass. He's a, you know, not a good guy. Cut to sitting courtside. Now, I have questions about this because I was not there for this episode. What? How was that shot? Was that an actual Lakers game? Now they're okay, sitting next, next time you see, they're sitting courtside, uh, right next to the bench. Uh, they're playing the Timberwolves, and it's Larry and Richard Lewis sitting courtside at a Lakers game. Tell me right. about that. Well, it's a combo. It actually, talk about technically, that was done magnificently. Yeah, by probably Steve Rash, I'm guessing, or John Steve, Corn. Steve Rash and Cor John Corn were our editors, and at Steve the time. Rash is still it's on still the show. Still our editor, yes. and I've worked with Corn. And Corn was an that, editor for many seasons, but Steve Rash has been from the beginning. Right, right. But Corn knows how to do it. Yeah, and he's gotten hired to do a similar thing. Corn's he's done a couple of my movies. I couldn't say so enough. So was good there? Thing. Was tell me about how that. I was I don't done. remember who edited it, but. Um, how was it shot? It was shot at a real game with, they were wired and were shooting from far away with long lenses. Uh, and it's a real game, all the stuff. And when he walked out and people were booing, um, I think that that was a, a, a fake setup. Okay. Like, and by the way, there were also cutouts behind them that you couldn't see. They're in the dark, like the way it was lit. Yeah. So it feels like there's a lot of people. There were always real people, you know, a, a good amount of way behind uh -huh. them. We had that a lot of background in that. But it was shuffled in and out to where I'm watching. And, and I don't know. Tell. I don't know. I do know 
when they're walking in and they're saying shit to each other. No one, you know, at this point, people might have noted, noticed Richard Lewis and a long shot Larry. So it's not like it's well, creating... but Larry was not, you know, as famous. He was known for doing Seinfeld, Seinfeld. but that was behind the camera. Right, that's what I'm saying. So his face was not known in the same Lewis way. Richard Lewis is... Well, pretty well known at but that Yeah, point. but he was yeah, never a well mass known. comedian. Yeah. Like, uh, funny, smart people, Doug Rich. He was right. a hip comedian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they're walking down. No he was one a knows. cult comedian. He was a cult. No, he's more than a cult, yeah. but nonetheless. Yes, definitely up that alley. But like when they're walking down to their seats, we're shooting from across the arena. Uh-huh. And no one knows we're there. And that's why no one is even looking at them as they're talking and walking. And what about the sound? The sound I'm, was the actual game. Was the actual game. And then game. on scenes that were contained, we just used the sound from the uh-huh. actual thing. So it was a hybrid kind of a hybrid. thing. Hybrid. And, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll, another question about that, but I want to get a little further along. So um, Larry, you know, Larry's long and lanky, and they're sitting courtside. And I'll tell you a story about when I was sitting courtside once. You think you're so cool sitting courtside. By the way, dangerous. we sat courtside together in the next game. We did. We did. And by the way, that was the night where I watched you. People said, oh, I love you on the show, whatever. They said to you, they wanted you to yell at them. Right. I mean, but I was, when we were riding the train out of there, actually, and I'm like, how the fuck do you deal with that? That's insanity. People just constantly want me to tell them to go fuck themselves. Do they, they probably still do that now. Yes, of course. Yeah. Thank God I Pandemic don't have that. masks has been a delight in that way. <laughs> uh, one time, Jimmy and I were, of course, we were under the basket at the end, and a ball comes at my face really, really fast. I just saw it in slow-mo. If it would have hit my face, I would have... Broken your nose. I would have had a concussion. I would have flipped. I might have been dead. I would have flipped back. (laughs) You wouldn't have been dead. It was really... I mean, I would have been... There's a game called bombardment or dodgeball where people whip balls. I play hardly. dodgeball. Okay, if you, I've gotten hit in the face in dodgeball. It hurts. You could break your nose. It, for you to die, you'd have to have some weird pre-existing condition. All right, well, I didn't. Well, don't but anyway, my husband saw it through the corner of his eye and deflected the ball quickly with his arm. And pushed it and pushed it out of the way so it didn't hit my face. And his his he hurt his arm for like three years. It hurt after that. Wow. Yeah. Because the ball was coming angle. so fast. Wow. And I just it's like I was just sitting there in slow mo. Did you anyway, look at him and go, "My hero"? Of course I did. Yeah, you always. But by the way, on a normal day, you, I, he's my hero. But but my point is, sitting courtside is a dangerous proposition. And there's Larry, and Larry sticks his long, lanky legs out but and on. crosses them. Uh, 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 um, um, my friend Steve Moscow was sitting with George Shapiro, who was Jerry Seinfeld's manager. Manager and so uh, many others. Uh, well, no, Andy Kaufman. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned. And a beloved man. I, I, he was a dear friend of mine, and I... Truly look at him as the kindest man who's ever yes, lived. I, agree. I really, I really believe. So at at George's memorial, Steve had this clip of the two of them sitting where you say you were sitting. I don't believe you. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, obviously I'm kidding. Um, and Shaq plows into them. Oh my god. Shaq, forget the ball, and the whole row goes over. Everyone's fine. You know, but it was Shaq, actually Shaq. And Shaq is quite large. He's not just tall. He's big. He's a big, he's a mass. He's a mass. He's Shaq. And the other thing, when you they they, they, their sweat gets all over you. You feel their sweat on your face. It's not. What what are you talking about? Basketball players. They don't sweat on you. Yes, they do. No, there's no smacking of sweat. Yeah, I feel it. I've sat there. What are you talking about? I feel it. I'm more sensitive than you. I think it's your imagination. So Larry sticks his his legs out. All right, what? And he trips. Shaq. Shaq. And, you know, Doc Wiggins runs into Shaq, and they take him off the court, and the whole stadium starts to boo oh. Larry. Is it? And so when Larry's doing this, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's just the fans on the side there. Right. That it wasn't at a real game. But we could have. But I think 
because people were yelling back so strongly, it couldn't have been a regular crowd because they'd have no way. They would look at him like, why is this guy pointing? Yeah, yeah. They would, there'd be strange looks, Yeah, not looks of, so that's another thing. So it was a hybrid kind of a thing. You know, but that, right there, but then when you go to wide, if he's taking a step, you may show him wide taking yeah. a step. But when you're tighter, it's him, you know, getting yelled at, you know. Right. Yeah. He's getting booed. And he's screaming, it was an accident. It was an accident. And then Cheryl's on the phone. It's, it becomes a big cause celeb. Cheryl, everybody saw it. It's on and the news. And by the way, let's also establish something else. When Richard and Larry are are sitting there, Kobe stretches right in front of them. It's on camera. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, that's that. Kobe. Uh, the player, I know. The player, um, by the way, I did a Nintendo commercial with Kobe his rookie year. And he was so sweet. Speaking of every nonsense thing that I asked him to tell somebody else, he loved it. Couldn't wait to sell them, tell them that he collects lotion or whatever nonsense it was. God, that was fun. I, God, that was fun. I always wanted to meet him again and go, do you remember that? And guys like that, like Michael, you never forget. They don't forget anything. Yeah. They almost have like this well, photographic memory. I think for memory. comedians, the people that impress us are sports stars. Generally, yeah. 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 Yeah, you know. So everybody, is Shaq is now out for, what is it, two months or three months? Something. Three months. He's I out think. for three months. And people think that Larry had a motive and did it on purpose because he's a Knicks fan. And he's walking down the street and people are screaming at him. Hey, asshole. Yeah, you the one. So your fault. It was an accident. I, I was know. just stretching my legs out, and he, and he tripped. They took away my tickets. The Lakers took away my tickets. Yeah. They can't do that. Sure they can. It's in the Why? back of the ticket. I'm responsible for whoever sits in my seat. What were you stretching for? What reason? You're in the first row. Then he runs into you in the middle of the street, and you're, what the fuck? They took away my tickets. By the way, for my performance to be real, per se, I actually walked through traffic. They were going to stop traffic for me, and I go, "No, I have to feel the anxiety of all that." It was the that was like I'm me lucky doing, you survived. No, hold on, that was me choosing to do my own stunts. Who am I, Tom Cruise? Ha. That's insanity. But anyhow, you fucked me. You fucked me. Yeah, Which, by the, by the team, way, you tell I used them. in our scene the other day. You remember? You fucked me. I didn't realize that that might be a oh, kind of catchphrase. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, after all these years, you fucked me. Okay. Um, you tell him to buy the team. They took away your tickets. You're very up upset. Everybody's upset with him. He goes to his office. He's confronted by Chuck, the janitor. And by the way, actor. I only wanted to, he, he appeared in a few episodes, but his conversations with Larry, I could not, I was beaming every night at the monitor because he's being so sweet. Why would Why you would do, do that, that to Shaq? <laughs> Why would you, who does that? It's Shaq. And it was so sweet the way he played it, which worked for with Larry defending himself because the guy never got mad at Larry. At yeah. one point, he was really just confused about all of it. I thought that was a great take. Yeah, and terrific actor. Um, and he gets to the office and... Um, even his secretary is harassing him. And Larry says, I want to send Shaq Seinfeld tapes, which is, again, a dated. He sent him tapes, VHS tapes. Right, we, again, a no, dated thing. Hold on. Oh, were they, were they three quarter? No, they were they were VHS tapes, but they were all labeled. They labeled. weren't even like yeah. pre-made tapes, which right. I thought was actually, I'm sure that wasn't done on purpose, but or maybe because we couldn't get clearance for them or whatever. But I thought that was so funny to have a big plastic tub. And by the way, speaking of Seinfeld tapes. So back when Larry and I were first working on the show, the, on the hour and everything afterwards, um, um, Laura, Larry's assistant at the time. Now our executive producer. Of, she's one of the producers. Yeah. Um, and by the way, earned it. Yes. You know, we're talking over a 20-some-odd-year period, and I think she's a great producer, which I think I've said on the show before, because a lot of people move up because of stupidness. Um, it just happens. But anyhow, Laura would always say to me, I mean, all the time, hey, you want some Seinfeld tapes? I have every episode of every season, and it was a box set, uh -huh. and I took them. Then it switched to DVDs. DVDs. Same thing. You want the DVDs? And I took them. And what I would do with a lot of them is have us sign— Do you still have them? 
I may. In a box somewhere. Uh, yeah. In your but, basement. But I got rid of most of them because what I would do is have all of us sign them. Yes. Yeah. And we've then done give them to the charity. But it was an endless supply. They couldn't get rid of them fast enough. But it's it's also, you know, I mean, I have I have tons of Curb DVDs. What to do? Sign them. Yeah, but and nobody even wants them. them anymore. Baloney. Let me tell you something. You get all of us to sign them, specifically Larry, obviously. Um, people will want that all right. as a keepsake to put on their shelf with their uh, adult male lingerie. So he goes into. No, his, I, I acknowledged you. Okay. He goes. You into, didn't acknowledge yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shook my head a little you bit. You did not shake uh, your head. Uh, uh, and by the way, that was a dumb one. Yeah. So I'm acknowledging so, that. So he goes, he wants to get Shaq Seinfeld tapes, and then he's got to work on his page, his birthday page for what was his name? Bob, Jim, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he leaves. The and, Liker fan guy, by the way. Yes. And, 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 and his assistant, Antoinette, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. says, no goodbye. <laughs> then we are on the street and nothing could go wrong okay. for Larry. So it starts with a splash. Dort, Dort again, who is show, our, was at the master. time our prop master. But by the way, such a beautiful thing that it occurs to him the, after the Shaq thing that, oh, maybe my luck has changed. This is not a blessing knowing, in disguise. Not knowing how much his luck would... And by the way, every one of those luck-changing things that we're about to talk about is believable. Yes. Because I've seen it happen to me. I've seen it happen to other people. People get smell that you smell or you've done something wrong. They run for the hills. If they're pissed at you, run for the hills. This was such a citywide thing. Yeah. It touched everybody. So his luck has changed. The guy next to him gets splashed. Larry doesn't. Uh, uh, Cheryl's parents are leaving because there's too much commotion going right. on because of the shack thing. Yeah. That's a delight. Um, hold on. Um, By the way, after they leave, Larry goes, you're not going to say goodbye yeah. as they drive they off. See, we'll, we'll, uh, Paul Dooley says, we'll leave you in your chaos. Right. And Larry says, don't don't you say goodbye. Uh, the, the, the woman who wants him to, the wife who wants him to write the page. By the way, an improviser from Chicago, wonderfully talented. She did a lot of stuff on Mr. Show. Brett Paisel. Is her who name. plays the wife? Yes, and she comes up and she t tells Larry, "You know what? I decided I'm not going to do the page. It's it, it's." It, it, and what did Larry say that he did? I was going to write my memories from the two times we had dinner no, but what together. What else did he say? I drew a beautiful rainbow. <laughs> yes, I drew, the, and I was going to write my memories from the two times we had dinner <laughs> together. Uh, beautiful rainbow, rainbow. I love you, Bob. So it was, Bob was his name. Um, and he said, Larry's sister, how did the other acquaintances take it when you told them that you weren't going to do the page anymore? Right. This, guy, this is the kind of but stuff that I love. he knows damn well why. Of and course he knows it. why. He Greatest knows it's all because of the shack. Yeah. He loves it. Um, he's tap dancing. Um, you know, he's so happy. Um, and Jeremy then shows up. Larry, Larry, okay, glad I caught up to you. Housekeeper said you'd be down here. I want to talk to you real quick. Uh, let me, let me take a guess. Well, all right. <laughs> all right, can I take a guess? Yeah, sure, sure. You don't want me to write the letter of recommendation. Wow, yeah. Holy, well, what a... It's a load off my mind, I'll tell you. I'm, it's I'm, a shame, uh... though. It's a shame because I wrote some really laudatory things about your work with the... The, uh, the you, geometric shapes, the triangles Thanks. and the trapezoids yeah, there's and all a that. more to it than that. Well, but I, I, mean, I don't you know, know about really that, but they're very compelling it. figures, the triangle Thanks. and the square yeah. and... Well... Thank you. Hey, you take care of yourself. All right. Okay, right. maybe some other time. Yeah. I'm available for any any kind of favor that you need. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Bye-bye now. Coffee on me! Ladies and gentlemen, free coffee and donuts and Danish and bagels, anything you want. On me, I got it. Everybody, come on, come on up, get some coffee. Yes. And he's just tap he's dancing. dancing. Everything on me, milk and coffee. Who would have thought? A latte. And he goes into that whole thing, which I, I love those little things that he does. Milk and coffee. Who would have thought? Vanilla bullshit things. Yeah, vanilla bullshit things. I had yeah. that also. Okay, and then he's at the hospital. And he sees, he sees a guy in green scrubs who clearly looks like a doctor. Surgeon, yeah. Yes, yeah, surgeon. And he goes up to him and he asks him to look at the thing on his back. And the guy who is played by Barry, Barry Diamond, Diamond, a comedian, a comedian that yeah. you know, I love Barry Diamond. Yeah, was a what? I, I, I mean, would, I, I don't would, know if he's still doing stand up, but he was really by the way, funny, really I, funny. I, 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 I remember very clearly in the early days of MTV, he was 
like the MTV comedian, and he would do bits, and he recorded an album, and he was like, who's this guy going to be a big star? Yeah. I remember that. And a very funny stand-up. Yeah. His stand-up was very funny. And a delightful and he, gentleman. I love adding. And he and he looks at the thing on, on Larry's back. It's a solar keratosis. He says it very convincingly, as though he's a doctor. It's a solar keratosis. It's nothing. And then Al, the agent, comes by and he brings Larry into Shaq's room. And he's very affable, Al, the agent. He's not angry at Larry. Well, he calms about Larry down. Thing. Sure, bring yeah. the videos. And by the it's way, it's his they, favorite show. Oh, Come on. But by the way, they had stopped him, the hospital, from bringing the videos. And then. Uh, the, the the agent comes by and goes, no, come bring on. Bring him, bring him. It's yeah. his favorite show. Bring him. He'd love to see you. And uh, we go into the uh, the room and Shaquille O'Neal is there playing Scattergories with his girlfriend, who I believe was Alicia Tyler. Alicia Tyler, Aisha yes. Alicia Tyler. Yes. Tyler. And Doc Wiggins. Here's a sidebar about Shaquille O'Neal. First off, Shaquille O'Neal, when he did this, had no idea what the show was. What Curb was what or Curb what Seinfeld was? What was. Curb. Okay. He had heard of Seinfeld, and I think Seinfeld's the reason he did the show, because it was done by the guy who wrote Seinfeld, and he wanted to do so it. So was he a Seinfeld fan in real life? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I think that's why he did the show. Like, it was like, a, however, his real-life manager was furious. That he that accepted he, it. That he did the show. And I know this because a close friend of mine uh, who was in that industry, the sports industry per se, um, the manager knew that he and I were friends. And he said, you tell him that he was lucky to get Shaq, that piece of shit show. Like he slammed the show. Really? Biggest mistake Shaq's ever made. Like all of that, which is really funny. And... Um, at the time, I actually laughed because it was just absurd. Yeah. And uh, but he did the show, and he was fucking great. Yeah, he was terrific. That was my it, sidebar. Susie. And this was really did you his, enjoy the sidebar. I totally enjoyed it. Do you like a good sidebar? You Who played. Like you a played a sidebar? defense attorney on uh, Law and Order. Did you ever have a sidebar? Uh Your Honor, can I approach the bench? Have you ever said that on the show? Maybe. One time, one time, my judge was um, Sandy Duncan. All right, now, hold on a second here. <laughs> Why was that never discussed with me? I don't know. You know the joy I'd get out of that. One of my non sequitur famous people names that I use all the time is I'll see you at Sandy Duncan's Barbecue. Right. To Molly Ringwald, too. As a matter of fact, earlier I just said to somebody, I'll see you next week at Molly she Ringwald. She was never a judge. I, did, oh, you so you just said that? No, for no, me. Sandy Duncan was. Molly Ringwald was never a judge. Okay, but I'm saying Sandy Duncan, yes. Peter Pan, yeah. the Sandy Duncan show, Wheat Thins. I she know. played a judge. So what happened with you and Sandy? I don't remember, Jeff. I, I'm sorry. But by the way, you could have mentioned that to me. That's big information. Well, now you know. Why didn't you call me after you filmed that? What are you smoking? All right, go ahead. So uh, Shaq was terrific in the scene. He's playing categories, and he wants to claim that peanut butter is a dairy product. Uh, listen. Oh, categories. Dairy products. Uh -huh. Peanut butter Peanut butter would be considered a dairy product. Am I correct? Absolutely. Oh, butter. Thank you. Butter. God. There's butter in there. Are you kidding? I... Okay, listen. No. I've got uh, Pendant, Porsche, Popeye, uh, Pago Pago, and Provolone. Doc's killing us. And he's winking. Peanut butter, butter, and he's winking. And um, Larry apologizes. Peanut butter is a dairy product. He agrees with Shaq. And then Doc Wiggins gives his list and then crumples it up and then goes to the bathroom. Right. And Larry looks at Doc's list. And there's no Pago Pago and there's no Provolone on the list. Doc Wiggins is a cheetah. Right. And a cheetah is a cheetah, Jeff. As I know, yes. And he made up he made up time after he ran out. And Shaq confronts Doc and fires him when Doc comes out of the bathroom. So Larry feels great about that because he hates this fucking Doc Wiggins. And Shaq clearly at this point loves Larry. Yes. Despite and, what and, Despite happened. what happened. And Larry's like, you cheated. And Doc Wiggins walks out and Larry says, don't you say goodbye? <laughs> I know. So that's just a running, that's just well, one that's of these things. Well, that's a fun callback, yeah. And uh, Shaq says his favorite show is The Contest. Do you have that one? Why don't you pop that tape in? I'll let bygones be bygones. And then another Orthopedist comes well, by in. Way, Michael Racy's another actor from Chicago. Yes, who who came in and who's said, the the other doctor, right? Who said, tells him nothing to worry about. We thought it was more serious than what you should be back in a few weeks. Exactly. Yeah. So and it's then all what good. happens? Larry leaves Shaq's thing, 
and get splashed All on the street. Yes. His luck has run out. So then, then he sees that he sees the doctor that told him it was a solar keratosis, Barry Diamond. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Could you give me a ride? The doctor. Yes, from upstairs. Yeah. Yes, how's your back? Oh. Okay, Barry. Come on, let's go. What? Stay out of the sun. He's not a doctor? Sixth floor. Psychiatric. So his luck has really run out. He he doesn't know if it's a solar uh, keratosis or whatever. And uh, that's the end. Yes, but also I wanted to point out because I realized Dean Pariseau, directed that episode, yes. who directed Galaxy Quest, and he directed me in Fun with Dick and Jane. Delightful man, very talented. I think he did a few episodes with us. Did he? Because I don't recall ever working with him. He, he never did. did one that Can I, I was in. Can I be honest with you? His request was anything but, but Susie. But Susie. Uh, and, and, and I wrote, don't know why I wrote down Megan Murphy. Oh, oh Megan Murphy is our post- Supervisor, supervisor for years was, and also yes. did all my movies. Yeah, A, a lovely person. Uh, but that being said, I think that between her and the editors, that whole section of being at the game, I couldn't believe how good it was. We'll see you next time. I have no point. I think Mm -hmm. you've noticed that. Thanks for the air kiss. And uh, everyone out there, just know I'm not air kissing you, but I'm uh, air kissing. I guess Henry Kissinger used to air kissing. Um, But I am saying... Kissing sounds like a Yiddish word, doesn't it? Like kissing? Well, kissing. Well, kissing. But the point I want to make is, and I've said this before, and I'll continue saying it, the fact that you're listening to this is a complete honor, and I can't thank you enough. And a joy. It is. It makes my life. I have a bounce in my step. That is, we're recording these in advance, so I'm hoping that people are actually listening. I would love for iHeart to come to us. Weirdest thing about this podcast, no one is listening. Can I hear a poo-poo-poo? Yeah. We'll see you next time. (laughs) 